Well, let's go ahead. Let's go for a ride. What, what is this for car? This is a wonderful Volvo 1967 1800 S, originally driven by Roger Moore in the television uh, series The fantastic. Saint. Fantastic. What a story. And you are back in Gothenburgville. Yes. To the heritage, to the museum where we pulled the car out because it's on display for the world to see. And I'm very happy to see that after uh, restoring it and all the time that we spent on the car. I'm glad that it can be seen every day here in Gothenburg, oh, where it belongs. I appreciate that you left it back home here. I do miss it, however, and it does. I can it, imagine. It's a wonderful car. But it's car. in a better place now and a place it will be forever, hopefully. But it's a long story behind this car being coming here. You, you had amazing uh, experience during the renovation during many, many times, uh, years, yeah. This car was actually sitting in a warehouse in a museum and it was in disuse. It had not been used for many years. It was in disrepair and needed a complete mechanical and body restoration. Whoa. Uh, which required quite a lot of time and money uh, I to guess, do. I but guess. the car was well worth it because of its history, its heritage, and after all, Roger Moore was the very first owner of this oh. car, which makes it very unique. And which year was that? This is was it? in 1967, and this is a 67 yeah. 1800S. It was the last of the three Volvos used in the Saint television series, and it was used in the color episodes. Well, the show was shown in 80 different countries, including Behind the Iron Curtain, one of the few shows that Russia would permit uh, because the, the main character, Simon Templer, was apolitical. So they actually showed this Behind the Iron Curtain. So oh. it's got a, quite a number of fans all over. Even there, yeah, yeah, all over the world, I guess. Exactly. It's a fantastic uh, vehicle that really touches your nerves when you see it. Uh, it's a beautiful design. Italian look. Yes, the front end looks very Italian from the day, from the 50s when this car was first designed. You know, it follows that narrow uh, nose and as far as the headlights on the out, on the ends of each of the fenders. Yes. Uh, and then you have in the rear a little bit of the tail fin, which came about through American taste. Oh yeah, uh, that's right. From the uh, cars of the Chrysler Corporation in the mid to late 50s by uh, Virgil Exner. There's a, a little fins there. So you have a real mix and it works well. It's very cohesive. Yeah. And it, the style holds up today. Yes. And I think for its age, it's uh, still a beauty in the design. It's, it's amazingly. And not only does the beauty work, but so do the mechanicals, the Volvo mechanics on this car, the, uh, all the, the engine, transmission, overdrive, work very well in harmony together so that you can drive the car smoothly at motorway speeds at USA, 70 to 75 miles an hour. Whoa. And, uh, you can still obtain about 30 miles per gallon uh, with it as well and it drives very smoothly So it's a perfectly great car for classic car enthusiasts as well Yeah, a lot of older cars, you know, they look nice, but you can't go more than 55 60 miles an hour This you can use it's every drivable. day Yeah, it's drivable. Yeah Boy, isn't this uh, scenery lovely here? Feels like we're on an episode of The Saint heading over uh, to Europe here. Yeah, and we're sitting actually in the seats, not um, refurbished. No. It's just the original. Uh, yes, this entire interior it was the same interior as the car was born with and filmed at Elstree Studios with Roger Moore and many famous actresses. You may be Shirley Eaton right now. It is quite the joy and honor to actually be invited here to be able to do this and be reunited with my old car. Yeah, you, you were the renovator, yes, caretaker I'm, for many years of this car. Yes, and in a way, this is sort of a new experience because Volvo took the engine that I had found that was missing for 40 years for this car yeah. and have renovated it, and now it has just been installed in this car. Oh. It only has five kilometers, so it's still breaking in a little so bit. It's matching so, numbers now. So now it's matching numbers. It has wow. the actual engine that uh, Roger Moore you know uh, uh, drove uh, the, the vehicle in so not only physically but mechanically it's now good yeah. so hopefully uh, hopefully everything is going well <laughs> I hope so and Roger Moore he 
brought the car to the set for the yes. Saint episode? He had, uh, initially he bought the very first Volvo uh, using the Saint, and then later when Volvo saw how much of uh, they were getting as far as commercial value, they provided them with two more cars, and oh. then in 67, two more cars, and this was the last of the 67 cars. This was the last. And this was the, yeah. yeah, and this was the film car, uh, that was used. He also had one for his personal use and from what I understand talking to people who worked on the set He would take these cars sometimes whatever he was driving at the end of the day He would just drive home because they only lived a couple miles away So he could have driven this car home or his personal car home uh, Whatever he was more convenient to him huh. and this car was lost for many years or it was not lost but lost for you because well, lost for me, yes. yes. However, the each of the owners in this car had, I'm the seventh owner, I guess, but the previous six owners knew of the car, knew what it was, and knew that Roger Moore was the actual first owner. So it never was really sort of lost, it was just sort of mislaid. Uh, the folks who had it knew what it was, but it wasn't advertised. And in those days, in the 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s, you didn't have the internet to keep abreast, you had to be at local car shows or word of yeah. mouth and that sort of thing uh, for it. So that so that's what brings us here, where you know this car is fantastic provenance. I like to say that Sean Connery drove the Aston Martin, but he didn't own the Aston Martin. Mm, Roger Moore drove and owned this car, yeah, which makes special. it very, very special, special, very unique, and a piece of Volvo cultural TV and Swedish history. Yes. Now, now it's come back home. Yes, it is. At the Volvo Museum, it has a prime spot for everyone visiting the museum will see. Exactly, and that makes all the efforts that I had put in worthwhile. And so I see in the dashboard, it's very well equipped. It's so many gauges. I'm glad you mentioned that. This gauge here was actually in, put in by the studio to see how hot it was oh. when they were filming. That's not a Volvo gauge. The studio actually put that in, as well as the fan behind us. Let me see if it still works. Oh, oh yes. Air, yes. Air, yes. Ah, can you <laughs> feel the air fan. conditioning? <laughs> Well, one thing this car didn't have was GPS back yeah, in that oh, day. No. <laughs> and, you know, so, so uh, yeah, I'll have to, let me make a turn here. Yes. That's all right. The car went very smooth over the speed bump. Oh, this wow, is a, what a suspension. It has a very nice spring suspension, no leaf springs, it's coil springs front and back. Part of my restoration for this car was to actually try to find the actual coil springs that were used and I actually found new old stock original Volvo springs I had tried three different sets before I went ahead and uh, found the correct ones and it gives the car the proper stance the proper ride and, uh, and, and the brakes and the brakes are everything is fine yeah. and, you know, so everything is, is it drum brakes all around uh, or? the disc in the front and disc drum in, in the, the back front. Whoa. so yeah. for 1960 when the car was designed that was actually a bit advanced for its time and you know, look, we can see us in front of the uh, Volvo, in the Volvo Museum, Museum yes. in, the, in the literally a glass mirror here.